How's it going guys, JP here and welcome back to another Mixed Martial Arts related video and this time I want to start a new series kind of. And the idea behind this is I want to watch and review every UFC event that I can find. And what I mean by every event that I can find is, you know, can I see it on DVD or Fight Pass? Is there a legit way to see it without having to track it down through like, you know, crazy Russian internet sites? And if there is, I will cover it. Mainly the numbered events, but uh, probably the ultimate ultimates. And if we can get to, you know, some of the fight nights, if, if there's, you know, if it's on Fight Pass or something, we'll talk about those ones too. Now, I have no idea how long this is going to take me. It'll probably never end. And, you know, I might quit before I even get that far. I don't want to, but, you know, if, if this series is not going well, then, you know, that'll, that'll you know, be what happens. But... Before I get into this, I kind of want to, you know, put up a little disclaimer. I'm not an MMA expert. I don't know a ton about martial arts. I, you know, I've been, I know very little, actually. I would say that I'm a little more knowledgeable than a casual fan. Um, so the idea behind this is kind of just to document my experiences going through the early events to through to, you know, the Zufa era and, and so on. Because I've seen a good bit of the early, early stuff and you know all of the new new stuff but there's a big gap in between where I'm completely unfamiliar with and I really just want to learn more I want to know the history of the UFC I want to see these belts being passed around I want to see when you know lightweights were uh, you know brought in and, and weight classes I, I want to see all of this stuff and I want to be more knowledgeable about the sport so that's what I'm doing and I thought it would be fun to kind of document and you know talk about each event after I watch it and and you know but the main idea behind this is it's a history lesson I want to learn more about the UFC and mixed martial arts in general so that's the idea behind this so you know don't take my reviews and and stuff too seriously because I you know I'm, I'm still learning I, I, I really am so with, that, with all of that said let's hop into UFC 1 I believe this was from I believe it was November 12th um, I could actually look real quick on Wikipedia yeah November 12th 1993 and that is like two years after I was born so wow you know really puts things into perspective you know the UFC has been around forever I, and the first event I believe I seen was uh, it was in the 40s and it was I believe it was uh, Babalu um, versus Chuck Liddell. I think it, it, that's what it was, but I think it was in like UFC 40 or something. Um, you know, and then there's huge gaps in between what I've seen after that. So UFC 1, this is not, uh, you know, I'm not going to, you know, go into detail on everything, you know, how it was, you know, uh, thought up and, you know, how, how it was structured and, and, the, and all the backstory. I mean, there's documentaries on it, you can see that, but uh, just briefly, I will say, you know, what the idea behind it. The idea was, what is the best martial arts style? You know, the, the, is the age-old debate. Is karate better than jiu-jitsu? Is boxing better than uh, sumo? And, you know, nobody knew because these guys didn't fight each other. So the idea behind the UFC was, let's take all these styles, put them in a tournament, and let's see which one is the best. Uh, which is such a, you know, golden idea. And... <laughs> It's crazy that it took the, you know that long for somebody to put an event together and and, and do it. Um, so that is you know the idea behind it. It was a tournament format in the early UFCs. There were really no rules. It says so right here. Um, <laughs> but I mean there was no fish hooking and I think eye gouging was like the only thing. Um, so with that said, let's you know jump into the fights. The first fight in the UFC I guess was Jason De Lucia versus Trent Jenkins, and uh, Jason won that via submission rear naked choke. I actually could not find this fight. I didn't look for it very hard on the internet. I'm sure it might be out there, uh, but I, I could not find it when I, you know, just did a quick YouTube search. So uh, I do not know, you know, what that fight was about, but I do know that it was an alternate fight. Basically, uh, in the UFC, the idea is, you know, if, if a tournament winner cannot... Uh, you know, continue on to the semifinals or finals because, you know, broken hand or uh, fatigue or whatever, they would have an alternate to step in and, you know, fill, fill the shoes of that person. And I know that 
uh, that does happen in the later UFCs, um, but luckily it did not happen in the first UFC because it was kind of a bummer when that would happen. I, you know, I know from experience watching some of the other events. Um, so that fight, uh, I don't even know if it exists. I don't know if there's a video. Now we move on to the actual televised pay-per-view, the tournament. And the very first televised fight in the UFC was Gerard Gordeaux versus Taylor Tooley. Now, this was, I believe, Savat versus Sumo. And it is one of the most iconic images in the UFC. Uh, basically, they come out. Uh, Taylor Tooley tries to, you know, rush in on Gerard Gordeaux, try to get a takedown. Loses his balance, uh, is, you know, stuck up against the fence, and Gerard Gordeaux just viciously kicks him in the face uh, and wins the fight via downed opponent head kick, uh, followed up by some punches. And it is just a brutal image, a very violent, of Taylor Tooley's tooth just flying out of his mouth. He's bleeding, uh, doesn't know, it doesn't look like he knows what the hell is going on. And it's like, welcome to the UFC. And it's just like, wow, that was the first fight televised. Wow, you know, that had to just be, you know, very shocking at the time. Uh, because it still has an effect. It, it's just such a brutal uh, kick. Um, so, uh, Gerard Gordeaux moves on to the semifinals. And the second fight on the card is Kevin Roussier versus Zane Frazier. Now this fight was probably the most competitive. Uh, back and forth, uh, Zane Frazier I thought was getting the better of Kevin. And then he fatigues. This is the longest fight of the event I believe and wow, you know, he, he fatigues and uh, Kevin just kind of, uh, you know, starts punching him up against the fence, hits him in the back of the head a couple times. Uh, starts uh, foot stomping him uh, in the head and uh, you know wins the fight via uh, corner stoppage uh, due to head stomps uh, yeah yeah you know it, it was a classic case of you know one fighter fatiguing and and the other just you know pushing through and, and getting the win um, so uh, then we move on to uh, Hoist Gracie versus Art Jimerson and uh, this one, uh, you know, Art Jimerson has the one boxing glove, and it's kind of that image of the spectacle of UFC, uh, the early UFCs. Just what, you know, a box, one boxing glove, uh, it, it's just, you know, silly. It doesn't even look practical. Uh, Hoist Gracie, of course, gets uh, Jimerson down, um, and actually he mounts him, but he, I guess the fight, you know, I guess the f official ruling is Hoist Gracie via submission via mount um so he mounted him uh <laughs> and uh, i guess he just figured he couldn't do anything so he just gave up you know he couldn't get out of the mount so um you know there was no really uh strikes uh, maybe a brief headbutt or whatever but just taps out because he was mounted um which is just one of the funnier um, you know, if you look on Wikipedia and it says, uh, you know, submission, uh, parentheses, mount, it's just funny to look at that somebody got submitted uh, due to mount. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Hoist Gracie moves on to the semifinals, uh, you know, with his jiu-jitsu. Um, then we move on to Ken Shamrock versus uh, Patrick Smith, who I believe on the back here it says uh, Patrick Smith was uh, kickboxing and... Uh, I believe on the actual broadcast it says that he's uh, Taekwondo. Um, so, uh, you know, Ken Shamrock uh, pretty much, you know, takes the fight down and uh, gets a hill hook. Uh, you know, just didn't know how to defend it, uh, Mr. Uh, Jimerson and, uh, or not Jimerson, uh, Patrick Smith. Pat Smith just didn't really know how to defend it and uh, gets uh, hill hooked out. So uh, then we move to the semifinals, um, where the first fight is Gerard Gordeaux versus Kevin Rozier. Uh, this one was kind of just, uh, you know, Gerard Gordeaux just kind of was the better fighter here. Uh, you know, got uh, uh, Kevin up against the, the fence and just started landing some vicious elbows. Uh, and, you know, pretty much it, it looked like Kevin Rozier was already pretty beat from the previous fight. 
and uh, Gerard Gardeau even had a broken hand, I believe, during this fight, but wanted to continue on, and uh, Gordeau just kind of uh, was elbowing the hell out of him, uh, good elbows, uh, and eventually, I think it ends the fight with a, you know, vicious stomp to the ribs, um, or somewhere in the body region, uh, which looked pretty painful. Uh, they throw in the towel, and uh, Gerard Gordeau moves on to the finals. And the second semifinal match is Ken Shamrock versus uh, uh, Hoist Gracie. And, you know, this one is, uh, you know, it, it's interesting to see, you know, Ken Shamrock, UFC 1, Hoist Gracie, UFC 1, facing each other in the semifinals, uh, both kind of the more submission ground-based fighters. Uh, Hoist gets uh, uh, Ken Shamrock down, and uh, pretty much, you know, uh, Ken doesn't really know how to defend, and he later says in the post-fight interview that he was worrying more about trying to go for a leg and being offensive instead of defensive, and um, Hoist pretty much, you know, gets a kind of like a side rear naked choke uh, that looked, you know, in today's time would probably be pretty defendable, um, but, you know, back then a lot of people didn't know what the hell was going on, and uh, you find that out listening to the commentators. It's pretty crazy when, you know, I know more than the commentators did back then. Um, so yeah, both uh, Hoist Gracie moves on to the finals, and he faces uh, Gerard Gordeau. Um, this fight, uh, Gracie, you know, gets him up against the fence. Uh, they clinch for a bit. Uh, Hoist eventually, uh, you know, trips him up and gets gets his back. Uh, you know, fumbles with the rear and naked choke for a bit, and then eventually sinks it in. Holds it on quite long. The referee's trying to pull him off. Uh, but I, I, I do know that Hoist Gracie said that, um, you know, in earlier in the Shamrock fight and the fight before that, you know, uh, the referee didn't see the choke. So he wanted to make sure he saw the choke that time. It was kind of just a uh, exclamation point on his victory. Um, so, yeah, that is UFC 1 in terms of the fights. Uh, if I was going to, you know, they didn't do the knockout of the night and stuff back then, but if I was going to do that, I would say Gerard Gordeau definitely gets the knockout of the night. Uh, Taylor Tooley, uh, you know, versus Taylor Tooley. Um, the fight of the night was definitely Kevin Rozier versus uh, Zane Frazier because it was the only one that really was, had, was competitive, was back and forth. Uh, the rest were kind of squash matches. Um, and then I would say submission of the night is probably the rear naked choke to win the tournament because the uh, significance of the choke. Um, wasn't necessarily the coolest submission. Uh, that would probably be submission via mount. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, the fights weren't, you know, they were very short. There wasn't a whole lot to, you know, look at and, and you know, it, it wasn't very competitive, but it was, uh, it has its place in time and, and history um, because the importance of the event, the very first event and, you know, uh, the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu kind of, you know, sweeping the, the, the floor and, and, you know, really being uh, the the big, mar you know, it, it, it's the steps that it took after this event were just, you know, just mind-blowing the amount of people that wanted to know jiu-jitsu um but you know in terms of like the technical stuff like uh the commentators and stuff man that shit is cheesy looking back on it now it really is it's just there's so much um you know people just not knowing what they're saying and you had the two uh male commentators one was uh the football guy the nfl player and then the other commentator was a female and she was a kickboxer and actually she really was the only one that knew what the hell she was talking about most of the time but the guys kept like shutting her down and cutting her off and uh, it was kind of funny you know it was a little messed up then they brought in the guy that knew a little bit about jujitsu thank god because nobody else knew what the hell they was doing um you know when hoist would get in a choke or something they'd be like ah, what what is this like why is he tapping what is going on here um <laughs> And uh, just seeing the, um, you know, ignorance of everybody is, is is really interesting because how far we have come since, you know, November 12th, 1993 is really quite impressive. Um, and the sport is continuing to grow and people are becoming more knowledgeable. And that's what I'm trying to do here by going through and revisiting all the old UFCs and, you know, uh, all the events. I just want to know more. Uh, and uh, killing two birds with one stone, I figured I'd document it all while, um, you know, watching uh and you know kind of just an excuse to go back and see these old events um and uh you know the post fight interviews are, are very entertaining you know ken shamrock you know looking all young being stone cold serious and you know almost like uh 
um, he has like this uh, character on it. It's it's it. You know, you can see that he's he's an interesting person from his very first UFC interview. Um, also, you know, Kevin Rossier was he was a good interview because uh, he just seemed happy to be part of it, and you know, he really liked to compete and stuff. Um, now, some of the stats like two hundred and fifty and O. I believe that was I, I want to say it was Pat Smith. Um, who was 250 and 0? Um, some of that stuff is just is so laughable. But with that said, I give the very first UFC event a four out of five, mainly for um, nostalgic and just because it's that classic event, um, and you got to give it credit for what it started. Um, so four out of five for the very first UFC event. I'll uh, see you guys in UFC two. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this and peace out.